Hello everyone, it is Too Awesome here with another video. So just a quick side note, I did see the movie two days after it came out and was looking forward to making a video that weekend, but I had a baseball tournament pretty far away and the Wi-Fi for the hotel was awful. And something very similar also happened this past weekend, so that is why this video is coming out so late. But if you followed my Instagram page at Too Awesome underscore reviews, you would already know this since I put it on my story and it might even still be up. That was a lie, <laughs> but maybe you should check it out. Link is down in the description, but without further ado, let's review Spider-Man Far From Home. I really enjoyed Spider-Man Far From Home, and I know I'm not supposed to give my opinion or else I'll get eaten alive in my own comment section, but personally I think that this is the best live action Spider-Man movie, and of course it's not better than Spider-Verse, but it comes pretty damn close. I mean this is a very fun movie, it was such a great viewing experience and I was really enjoying myself. Also the comedy in this movie was really funny, and it wasn't the type of comedy that you'd usually expect expect from a Marvel movie. It was more of your type of comedy that you'd see in a semi-mature teenage drama, which the movie kinda was anyway. You see, just like the first movie, this movie has a pretty big emphasis on Peter Parker and the emotion he feels about carrying on the torch of Iron Man, and how he'll have to step out of Tony Stark's shadow. And personally, I think this movie did a really great job of conveying that sense of anxiety along with the fact that he just wants to be a normal kid and go on a normal school trip and ask out his crush. And this is where the movie shines. Like I said before, Peter kind of just wants to be a normal kid, and the fact that he's being asked to be a hero leads to some pretty cool and real feeling scenes. I mean, the constant reminder of Tony Stark is obviously going to affect Peter, and it does. I mean, he gets overwhelmed by all the questions that are asked by the reporters at the beginning of the movie. And Iron Man is basically treated like a god. I mean, they have shrines and the like put all over the world. And he basically is one. I mean, he sacrificed himself for half of Earth's population, and that's a pretty high threshold to get over. So not only is Peter struggling with being Spider-Man and balancing his personal life, but now but now they added another level of struggle to this character, which is dealing with Iron Man's death, and I think that is amplified by this movie's villain. Now, I am going to be discussing spoilers for this movie, but I will keep discussing the movie after the time skip, so skip to the time shown on the screen now. One, two, three. Okay? Good. So if you're still here even after I gave you a spoiler warning, well, enjoy. So Mysterio was this movie's villain, and I think he was a really good villain. Maybe even one of the best Marvels ever had. I mean, he was a villain in the comics, and it wasn't much of a surprise that he turned out to be a villain, but the fact that Peter trusted him to the extent that he did, and he turned out to be a villain, really stung. Also, the part where he was messing with Peter Parker and showing him his deepest fears and really messing with him was something so cheesy that I couldn't help but love it. I mean, that scene was awesome, and it might be my favorite MCU scene so far. Also, I really liked the scene right where Mysterio got the glasses and did his whole speech about his crew. It was another cheesy scene, but it was also very funny, and I love the way Marvel can use the continuity like this to string the movies together in a very realistic and smooth way. And I know some people don't like how a lot of the MCU's villains are connected to Tony Stark. And I mean, yeah, you kind of have a point. But then again, he is probably the best hero to have to, have, to connect a villain to, since Captain America usually stays pretty low when he isn't on a mission, Thor is in space, Captain Marvel is in space, so on. But Tony Stark is a billionaire, which leaves room for, for a lot of villains and artistic integrity. But feel free to have a civilized conversation down in the chat below. But I have one last point that I want to cover in the spoiler section, and that's the fact that people are upset or annoyed at these movies for not having real stakes, and I don't think that could be farther from the truth. Think about it. Peter is given the glasses from Tony so he can take up his mantle as the next Iron Man, but because he feels he can't live up to those expectations, he gives them away to Mysterio. 
which ends up being the main villain of the story and eventually leaking his secret identity and making the whole world think that he is a supervillain. Because Peter gives Mysterio the glasses, it eventually ends up coming back to him in the form of the world knowing his identity and thinking he is a supervillain. How are those not real stakes? It seems that every small and minor detail eventually adds up into a pretty big storytelling aspect, and I think that's something that only a select few franchises can do, and I think Marvel is really killing it. But that ends the spoiler section of this review. Now back to the rest of the people watching. Talking about the rest of the people, I really liked the side characters in this movie and I feel like it isn't talked about enough. I mean, almost all of the side characters are enjoyable and fun to watch and at least bring something to the table story-wise or to further the story. Some, some of the best jokes and comic relief were brought by the side characters, and I'm really happy to see that the producers and writers really expanded upon the characters first introduced in Homecoming and even, even adding a few more and making them so likable and fun to watch. Another thing that they expanded upon was the combat in this movie. The combat seems so much more fun to watch and feels a lot more fluid, like Spider-Man is really using his surroundings to his, to his advantage and I love that. It reminded me so much of the combat from Spider-Man PS4 and if you watched that video, you would know I love the combat in that game. It also seemed like he was struggling with the fights but just barely holding it together. It's very hard to describe but trust me, you'll understand what I'm saying when you watch the movie. And I think this is really in line for this universe's Peter Parker. Overall, this is a really fun movie and an awesome summer blockbuster. And if you haven't seen this movie yet, I totally recommend it, especially if you're thinking about watching it with friends. It's just a really fun time. Overall, I give Spider-Man Far From Home a 9 out of 10. It's a super fun movie and the best live action Spider-Man film to date. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I will say it again, sorry for having this video come so late after the fact. But as always, stay awesome. Too awesome. Thanks for watching.